What's up? Welcome to the unofficial Tedeschi Trucks podcast. This is episode number 89. I am Adam Choit. I am not going to do the plugs and all that right now. I just want to get right into it and recap uh, what we just saw and heard with I Am The Moon four, uh, 4, Part 4, Farewell, the final part of uh, of this I Am The Moon album series, epic uh, epic uh, group of, of uh, albums they put together. Um, and in a second, I'll introduce Scott uh, McLennan. He covered music for uh, the, the Worcester Telegram and Gazette from 93 to 08 and and uh, has uh, done reviews and recaps and and all sorts of writing uh, that's music related for a long time now, according to him, of course. Um, no, but uh, for the Boston Globe, Providence Journal, uh, Portland Press Herald, I got it all right here in front of me. I think we should just uh, get him get him in here and let's get talking. I'm the moon farewell because he did a, a recap of uh, that, which I just read moments ago. But let's get him in here. Scott McLennan. Hey, there he is. How are you? Good oh, I'm you. all right. I, I'm sorry for all the, the technical snap. <laughs> I wasn't. You know, I wanted to switch to my microphone microphone instead of my computer microphone at the last second. And then it wasn't connecting. And I had like a panic attack over here. It's all but, good. It's, it's all, all it's par for the it's par for the course i suppose <laughs> i believe we are live it does seem like some people are uh here uh watching us right now okay. i believe uh let's see if, say something anyone in the chat chat if uh you guys are there but uh, how are you doing i'm doing well i'm i you know I, like you i just finished watching you know the movie um I love you know this whole concept of, of premiering the songs with with the film in a way that everyone can sort of enjoy it communally. I think it's just another really just fascinating aspect of this whole project. And uh, just like the three previous ones, I thought this one was you know, really just gave us something new, tied it in with what we kind of been seeing before with both the imagery and the music. It was, I you know, it, it just kind of leaves you awestruck. You know, it really does. Uh, I, yeah, I felt all of that. And it's, and it's interesting to hear you talk about like the watching it as a community, because that's something I've almost like forgot about or taken for granted. I'm so into like, what images am I seeing? How, let me hear all these new songs and listen closely to as many parts as I, as I can. I'm like, oh yeah. Besides seeing the band sense of community, both on and off stage during this film, like there's also that other layer, so to speak of like the fan community and the fact that we're sharing this all together. Do you um, do you have the the live chat open when you watch the uh, watch this the film? I did. I, I did this time. I, uh, I I I just I, I kept it open. I don't know why, but I, I just chose to. And you know, and then, you know, Susan popped in to uh, kind of like out of the blue. Someone had mentioned um, the song "Where Are My Friends," and she says, "Oh yeah, Mike wrote that." You, you know, I was like, "Oh hey, Susan," you know. <laughs> Very yeah. cool. So it was meant to be. You like that? The, the, it was worth your while. I I get that. I I guess I, yeah. I, I I for me, I just need to. It's almost like sensory overload between like watching <laughs> yeah. all the images on screen. I know. And, and processing the music and the and the lyrics and and all these things and it's like yeah. I don't. I want to take it all in at one time. I want. I want to like hear the song for the first time and I listen know. to See, it like, away. That's... As I've heard it like a hundred times, I miss so many lyrics, but I think yeah. that some of them even thematically, like they seep into you with if the, uh, your subconscious, your yeah. unconscious. Well, I also I had the unfair advantage that I did. You know, I I I had been living with these songs for a while because I did get I was able to listen to it in advance to write the review, and so I was I I, I was up to speed with uh, with with a lot of the material, so I had that's why I could kind of I think keep an eye on the chat because I was kind of curious to sort of see people's responses and reactions to some of the stuff, and because I hadn't previously, because I like I was like you know I still wanted to focus on on the images and um, you know how they were kind of connecting, you know with 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 the music, and I thought that you know that stuff that Alex Lambert did was just really just just stunning and. and I kind of cracked up to the beginning of this one, where they opened it with uh, the the sketches, and 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 even the camel got a sketch, uh, you know. So I thought that was pretty good. So yeah, Josiah, Josiah, <laughs> the, the 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 camel. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> I guess where to start. We go through all the all the songs. But how well? How long did you in advance have you been? Uh, when did you hear uh, "Farewell" specifically? It's funny. Ago, you know, three weeks ago, four months ago. No, no, I got I got this one. Um, uh, you know, they they released the first one by itself for in advance for review, and then I got. You know, so then after after Crescent, you know, I had to wait a little while, and then they sent Ascension, and 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 then I guess you know when they kind of felt like okay, they could trust, you know, trust people not to put the music out, you know, against the band's wishes early or something like that. I I did I got three and four together, but I actually I I didn't listen to four until after I was done with reviewing three. So I I, I appreciate that. <laughs> so. I, I I just sort of said, you know I don't want to I, I kind of want to take it for what it is and, and kind of kind of go through the journey as much as I can like a as a fan sort of this, this I there's I think there's I think the way that they did it there's a there's a value to sort of engaging in that process that the way that they put this whole thing together um, you know so sort of how you listen and I know by tomorrow we'll all be sitting there putting all 24 songs together and sort of thinking it through all over again, you, you know, as, as one whole thematic piece. But, um, you know, I, it's, I even, when I, when I was writing this review, and I know I couldn't really write this for a general publication because it would, it would be just, you'd have to be too far down the TTB rabbit hole, you know, sort of thinking back to when some of these songs started popping up during the, the fireside streams and, you know, what you thought about them at that time and then realizing how they were going about the writing process with you know using the story of Layla and then putting them together this way so there's I mean there's just so many different layers that you can sort of you know kind of peel back to think about what this whole project is about and what these songs are about um and I think that that was just you know, as a fan, that's like that. That's like such a gift, you, you know. I mean, and I imagine, you know, they could have done it backwards, right? They could have put out like, oh, like two CDs, twenty-four songs, just get it out there, you know, to the public. But instead, I think that they really made it sort of fan forward and really kind of, you know, if you're into this band, man, they gave you a lot of opportunities to dig around and explore this music um, in a way that you're going to get to enjoy it. And I, I, I really suspect somewhere down the line, there will be sort of like a two CD version of this that's, you know, available to people who aren't necessarily fanatics, but just want to hear the music, you know? And, um, but, you know, this is, you know, hearing it in this very structured, very intentional way. Uh, I think you get the most out of this, out of these songs. If you kind of experience it that way. Yeah. I've sir, I certainly felt that way all, all along as well. And, and, they definitely did that purposefully and it's and there's no there's only been a handful of other bands that even have attempted something even in the ballpark of of something like this it's it's a an achievement a landmark achievement if it's uh yeah. if, if that's if that's if that's correct i would agree with you on that i think so and i think it was a good you know i think in a lot of ways i mean it was you know it's, it's a, it was a reset for the band you know i think you know gabe's contribution as a writer and performer in this band really blossoms on this project um you know and i think you know is this is is all this kind of went along and you know them very openly talking about you, you know what um you know soul sweet song is about and and, and you know you know elements of of outside that poem you realize how much they influence the writing but how that stuff kind of ties into the themes of of the layla story too so just a lot of creativity just sort of kind of coming together you know in these songs no oh, man i like to listen to you just talk about music and talk about <laughs> ttb and these albums very well spoken well said well articulated and a lot of that stuff i wrote down and in, in, in <laughs> on my pad here while watching it it's it's funny because like i'm i'm ready to like let's go through the set list so to speak like all the songs <laughs> and the order and analyze what we saw and what we heard and we can do that and probably will do that but i feel like we kind of already are and i'm 
listening to you speak, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's totally how I felt during that song. Like, I totally felt like this is about, uh, you know, I feel the themes of Layla, but also feel the themes of loss and Kofi and all these other other things that are going on with the band. It's like the levels and the and the layers that that are able to be peeled back with this band is just phenomenal and makes makes the music that much more sustaining like in yeah. a way in a way that's maybe even different in some regard than their other albums and maybe that even goes beyond just the quantity of music that we've received but also the quality and and the uh, and more i guess more of a concept uh type thing but you can make the argument that there are concepts i think in past uh, studio uh ttb albums as well yeah, I think so too. And, and you know, what which struck me all, all along with this band is, I think you know, going back to Revelator, it, you know, it, it, it seems like when 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 Susan and Derek came together, I think the expectation was you're going to get a guitar blowout record. You know, you're going to just get this really massive guitar record. And and I don't think Revelator was that. And I think that. You know, they really put the effort into not making it that and focusing on the song, the songs, the structures, the arrangements. Like, and so I think like that initial seed has really, you know, now we're kind of seeing it here. They are whatever, you know, 12 years into it. And there's a chemistry in a group among this group of players that they can just take that idea and they've brought it to this, you know, to just such the next couple of levels, you, you know, when you just, you know, because I, I, I still think that Derek and Susan, you know, it's, 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 you know, you put them up as, you know, the pedestals of, you know, great guitar players, they're right up there. But these records aren't necessarily just putting that in your face. I mean, it's, it's you, you know, um, there's so much going on with the music and the way they use the horns, the way they use the vocals, the way they, you know, everything is just, you know, it's equally weighted out and equally important and equally influential to the overall, you know, impact um, that, you know, if you want to hear the 20 minute pass a coin, go to a show, you know, but you know, the, the, the recorded version is really kind of nice and it's its own little, Kind of formed way you know and so it's, it's 12 minutes it, that the, it is 12 minutes in itself <laughs> I, know. I know it's the radio version of pasaquan <laughs> exactly the radio friendly version of pasaquan <laughs> yeah. no so but yeah, what I, you go, I, I, go on no no like so i was just my, my the point that i was rambling about is you, you know is i think that you know i think that the band has stayed true to a certain a certain set of artistic visions and, and it just gets more mature and more, and, and just more refined and better developed. And, um, and, and yeah, so, I mean, we're at a point now where I think that this is just, you, you know, taking that, taking this band to like the next, you, you know, like another level. Yeah. I, but I, I, it still, it's amazes me that that's even possible. And, and I, I wouldn't even expect that, but that's like, you know, they, they challenge themselves in that way and 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 at least it Absolutely. seems like it and and it comes out in the uh yeah. in, in the music janet says uh the music is peaceful and joyful not morbid you know i guess referring to the overall themes yeah of, you know uh, I, it's funny because like, well you know, when, when something is called farewell I, I you know and, and again if you kind of relate it to the you know the the poem, you know, I mean, at the end, you know, no one, no one's together. Everybody's dead. Everyone's miserable. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, last night in the rain was, is probably like the only really like ostensible, like sort of physical separation, angsty kind of song. And the other, and, and, and where are my friends has an element of that loneliness to it, but there's a lot more of that, how people, can stay connected even when they're apart, you, you know? And so that notion of farewell and, or departure, um, you know, really is sort of mulled over. And I think, you know, that's, that was another sort of consistent quality, uh, quality to each of these records. I mean, I think they would, they would, they would pick on an element of that unattainable love story and, and and sort of examine it through a lot of different lenses or or just turn it around look at the different facets of that and, and come up with these different moods uh 
and hence different songs and different kinds of songs. So, yeah, I mean, they never really give you anything that you expected. You, you know, um, you know, if you, you know, I do think there's a connection to the, obviously to the, you know, Derek and the Dominoes, Layla. And when you look at what Clapton did, you know, he really kind of honed in on, oh, here's this love I can't have. And, you know, he even like, you know, he pulled lyrics right out of the poem, you know, for I Am Yours. And, and like, you know, he used that, he, he took the poem and it really, I think, was, is held him up as like a, ser you know, a piece of serious art that's rock and roll. And these guys did it in a, with a completely different end result, right? Like a, this record is a completely different vibe than you know, Layla and uh, other sort of love songs, um, but inspired by this sort of same sort of compass, you know, so it's, it's an interest again, that's just another interesting comparison you can sort of play with. It's fascinating how they continue to play, they or, you know, this whole circle of musicians and generations of musicians are able to take that poem and that story and, and use it to, to yeah. articulate and, and <laughs> express things going on and in their lives in terms of loss and love and all these things it's and of course there's all the all this the, uh, the the weird fact things with susan being born on the day the album's released and derek being named of course after the album so i don't know just all these layers and levels and and like and who knows what what can like where does the story go from here like may, maybe i mean i'm not going to be upset if this is like their last layla centric <laughs> thing that they do for the rest of the curse they're like, if they're, the band is like no more we're not doing like like now yeah, they'll play this, like the songs from the album live like, and i'm sure over the years that's gonna, not gonna stop but like mm -hmm. in terms of like a, a project dedicated to that if like all right we're not doing lock and layla album for at least another <laughs> decade i'm not gonna like be upset about that or, or the or these different things but like you know but they also you know like how much of it also just tied into their own lives i i, I think it was at the atlanta one of the atlanta shows where susan was talking about how la -dee -da was really you know also a lot about you know her and derek's son going off to college and how yeah she she's mentioned that at a few shows you, you know, and so like, you know, again, like, so you have that element, you've got that element of, um, you know, Kofi's influence, you know, on, 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 on this. And so, you know, their own, connecting their own lives and own feelings to that sort of emotional framework. Um, you know, just, I mean, that's what, I think that's, that's what makes it their own, right? That's what kind of gives it their own, their own stamp, you, you know, and, you know, who knows what Mike's thinking when he writes a song? His songs tend to be the ones that are like the real kind of curveballs and in all of this, and they're, they're wonderful and they're just so unique and, and just really put such texture in, in into this project. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny because like you say curveball and I feel curveball and like you listen to the first five, ten, or second. 10 seconds of any Mike centric songs. You feel like it's a curveball, but also you're like hooked in at the same time. It's a curveball that hooks you in. And then there's like the, yeah. the, some kind of guitar line or a chorus or whatever. And it's like, okay, I'm a hundred percent. And not that I was ever going to be resistant and not going to love the song, but yeah, it's like definitely like a curveball that oh, no, like, he's just, yeah, he's just a you know unique style. I mean, I mean yeah, we, you know, it's, you know, they, they have that writing team now of, of, of Mike, Gabe, Susan, and Derek kind of being the principal writers. I mean, you've got this inc really, I mean, just, you know, diversity and depth of talent that is, uh, you know, that, again, I think that's what's helping get the band, you, you know, into all these kind of new creative, you know, spots without losing, you know, it's still very much very identifiable TTV, but, you know, I think they're breaking new ground with just because of their you know the writing and what's driving the music yeah they all they all shine individually and they all shine shine collectively and it and i and i come back to the thought that you were saying you know saying earlier about how this is not just like susan and derek playing guitar like the band and and that should that should have been fairly obvious to anyone like when you see the lineup even when they just had 10 or 11 or whatever it was <laughs> with several horns and when they were merely band. nine of them or ten of them yeah nine. when they were merely 11 or whatever it was like you should have known that this is going to be more like mad dogs and the englishman than than uh almond brothers you know even to some degree yeah you know totally. with do 
but they but they give you just they give you just enough of of all of it whether it's on their studio albums or live like you get enough susan and Derek guitar in their play right. and solos and 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 all of that like yeah yeah never. I, I will say it's funny is I, uh speaking of the almond brothers the, you know i think a lot of us you know felt an almonds the very almonds vibe you know in 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 Pasaquan on that on the record and i think as they've been playing it out more you know that very distinctive lick i, I think has an almond element to it but the soloing i think is really taken on a life of its own i think that that song is i mean derek i think has just really figured out you know how to put a, a, a whole fresh stamp on on that. just you know i watched the the berkeley show uh, that they just aired the other night and you know the red rock show obviously had that epic one with with jerry douglas and it's like you know this is the song we were talking a little bit about this earlier that you know this is the song that they're playing every single night and i think you know that's because I think you're, you know, every every one of every one that you see is just another. You know, talk about watching a band literally grow in front of you and, and change in front of you. It's, um, you know, it's it's pretty remarkable. You, you know. Yeah, it's it's funny because I had the thought. I don't remember who 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 did it, um, but uh, some someone posted uh, like all these different versions of Idle Wind or like their top. 10 20 30, whatever the 50 whatever it was versions of idle Wind with like the cities and maybe even some reasons like why like oh it's amazing solo bass who's that you know whatever it is there drums were amazing and i feel like you know i'm gonna request that someone does that like we're gonna have to have a pa uh, like someone dedicated like just to that song like yeah we need, a stat freak. Yeah, we need a pass the coin stat archiving freak. you know the different different versions yeah yeah so yeah amazing i mean just looking at at some of the stuff and, and getting maybe a little more into the into the uh into the images that, that themselves here it's like uh it's it's so cool that we got to see some like i keep coming back to home movies like there's we get everything we, there's tons of images and all types coming at us but you never get feel like we're getting too much of any one thing and that kind of yeah. is the same way that's in the music you're getting the kitchen sink thrown at you but in a very artistic, creative, purposeful, you know, way. And yeah. I, I, I appreciate yeah. that. Always no, kind I of think, wanting, leaving yeah, you I more, think, wanting, I leaving think, you more. I think Alex Lambert really had a good feel for this music in terms of, you know, cycling through different themes, but then adding a little something, keeping it, you, you know, and you know, I can't remember if it was the second or third film where, you know, we, we saw the picture of Kofi in the studio and now, you know, we kind of got to this point where there's, you know, the whole homage to him. Um, you know, yeah, the whole movie stuff with them as, as little kids during uh, the Gary was, um, you know, it, it was almost distracting, right? Cause you're, you're trying to figure out like, wait a minute, which band member is this? You know, you're trying to figure out which, you know, which band member you're looking oh, at. Oh, all the kids, the kids photos you're referring yeah, to. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and that that song, I think that song is probably the centerpiece of, um, you know, of, of the fourth album. That, and it was uh, you know, just such a. Which one? Oh, Gary. Gary. Yeah. 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 So that's got some really nice Derek stuff on there. And the lyrics are beautiful. And it's uh, got that African, you know, music influence. And it's it's really, it's, um, you, you know. That that was a, that, that's a special song too, I think. And yeah, and, and just in the fact that like we were seeing these people and describing trying to figure them out, and without you know, without you know, if we easily rec, I mean, some of the, the pictures are more recognizable than, than the others. I mean, there may even be stock footage in there of, of people that are not even in the band, and that kind of makes it in some way like more oh, yeah. special to the band like if they were watching this like if you were watching your own home movie you wouldn't have like a caption here so and so <laughs> like but you wouldn't you know like it's 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 the band really letting us in on their world and we get so much of that in so many different ways and just from like just the raw footage that they that they share with us is, is so cool like just you know seeing them like smoking and just being normal people and and like their authentic selves is just a cool 
cool thing for us to be a, a part of I, and be let in on in you know in on a little bit and, it, it, and i think it also is, i mean you know a, 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 you know a lot of these songs is you know you know, uh, you know janet was mentioning how you know sort of this, the, the, the peacefulness about them or you, you know and they are you know what i love about this stuff is it's you know it, it, it's hopeful but it, it's not unrealistic I mean, it's not maudlin, you know, it's not, it's not overly sugary or sappy. It's, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's got a maturity and realism to it that, but it's, it's, you know, it doesn't have a lot of that biting cynicism that, you know, some that's almost kind of demanded in a lot of, you know, pop culture for, for you know, to, to cut through the static and, um, uh, you know they definitely have the they definitely have some darkness in here and there's dark aspects of it and some sad you know a lot of sorrow a lot of sadness but they deal with it in a way that ultimately i think kind of lands on a you know never giving up on hope never kind of giving up on your on your dreams never you know and following that stuff through and um you know there was a line in there too about like at, at the end like about you know everyone gets heartache everyone gets heartache thrown at them and um you know so there's an acknowledgement like not life's not always sunny but you know there's if you keep a spirit about things it's uh you know it's gonna be okay you know and um and i think that's that's just you know just another really appealing aspect to, to this music yeah you know you know what this band covers and if they don't cover it with their music it's covered in the video and with the images they cover all the emotions all the human emotions you really kind of get all of them you get e even laughter like just seeing the band interact yeah. with like laughter and joy and and sorrow and sadness are um maybe I, maybe I shouldn't say unfortunately that would require like a deeper philosophical conversation to us to to dissect that but certainly sorrowness and sadness like sorrow and sadness those are definitely part of our lives and 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 need to be dealt with and they choose to do it expressing it through music and that's just that's just a great thing but there's no place for cynicism that's what i feel like those the emotions there's a place for but cynicism is like an attitude and it's it's poisonous at least i think i think so and that's i'm glad and i yeah love that but they don't, i don't think they from that. i don't think they shy away from edge which is you know i think that they definitely can can approach edginess and it's just the way that they do it you know sure yeah. mm -hmm. i agree great trumpets by f Eph, uh trumpet by ephraim on uh last night in the rain oh just that yeah no that 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 whole arrangement is just beautiful with the horns and the vocals and sue's got kind of like a little almost twang and the vocal delivery and uh, it, it, it's yeah they really they you know across this project i think they they really tinkered with a lot of different sort of genre genre tweaks almost like you know some songs had like almost like an am pop 70s feel and i wrote that over and over again 70s and they're in taj mahal and 70s <laughs> stone this is an exile on a main street song like yeah. but you hear but you don't it's not like you can pin it down as just any no. song as just that but it's not anything that they like are going out of their way to crowbar together and they're not like let's make a country song that and mix with the rock song and it's not yeah. nothing is nothing is contrived yeah. everything is or, no, organic no. No. and we know that because they've talked about you know how this whole project came together in that in that manner yeah yeah yeah, yeah soul sweet song yeah no Just i mean like, again like that's you know I, I think that that, I mean, when I was reviewing it, I was thinking like, you know, here's a, you know, pro processing that, that grief and it, and it, it, it you, you know, it, it, I think anybody who's going through a struggle, you know, you can turn to a song like that and kind of get a feeling that the struggle, there's an end. Sometimes, you know, there, there's, there's an end point, you, you know, and life goes on and, and you can, you know, you can go on and uh it's you know i i was i was you know at that show in brooklyn that was supposed to be the re the release show for signs and you know kofi obviously had died like you know the two days before that and you know the band played the night we 
cast and then they did this show and they all took the stage wearing black and they had the picture of him on stage and you know it was just you know they and they played with you know such wild emotion i mean it was you know they did you know somebody pick up the pieces and i don't i don't think anybody really could hold it together and um you know so there they were like the depths of grief and it was really coming through in the music and their appearance and everything and over time and, and you know they, they they processed it and they talked about it and they used their art to sort of come up with you know you know this song that has like a really beautiful feel to it and it's um you know it's really it's a, it's a healing song you know and um and it's uh, and it's so genuine you know it's it, you know if you know their story you know you know that that's coming from a real place and if you don't know their story i don't think you would fail to feel the the genuine quality to that to that music and that song oh that is all so well said man i appreciate you you saying all <laughs> that like like certainly and uh I mean, it's really hard to like be a, a critic and, and like i know i'm like a and fan. a fan i'm a fan and, and i'm like you know and i really appreciate my editor kind of like indulging me like reviewing four albums and like basically he's like you know and i'm not saying anything negative and and like i tried to even think about like something mildly like i always want to say negative and, and like the like the like the, the the best i could come up with was like and I didn't even put this in there. Don't offend me. No, no, no. Wouldn't offend you. I, I, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm joking. I, I just the um, um, I can feel you smiling. It was a song that I, I I I mildly preferred in the fireside version when it was just the two of them on the acoustic guitar, and I thought that 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 song was just so nice in that structure. Not that they dressed it up any more radically with the right. recorded version, but like that's like my one. <laughs> Yeah. Had, you liked another version of the song more. <laughs> I, <that's laughs> you tried. As, that's, that's as rough as I could get. <laughs> you, you, you you tried. And I think maybe part of it, uh, you could probably maybe speak to this better than me, but the word critic and it cause like critique, it's like this that, that like that kind of has like a negative connotation a little bit to it. And and negativity, I guess, sells, so to speak, gets eyeballs and clicks. But what but it and is and that's but that's for that's that's for other bands. That's like for you know <laughs> like I like one it, it's true I mean most of my concert budget whatever all of it is going to TTP anyway. But compared to other shows you sh I mean we shouldn't compare apples and oranges or whatever. But you know I, I can I walk out of other other shows having a great time and i always go in with a great attitude and enjoy myself wherever but i could come up with better critiques of other bands albums and shows than than it's not my favorite version like it, it just, it, you know what i mean it, it's that like there's no filler and there's no wasted notes with with no, ttb I, I, whether it's live or studio albums yeah no i have to agree with you on that so it's uh, um, i mean if, if you if you like this music you really like this music you, you know what I mean, and um, and I think that's just the way it is. I mean, I, I I have encountered, you know, people who've gone and and they like, well, it's you know, if they jam too much or the songs are too long and whatever, like it's it, it wasn't their. They're not into team. that this kind that kind of music is really what it's. They're into their 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 primary music is either they're not really a big music fan in general, yeah. or they're they're just like into something else. Like they're yeah. like. Like for me, this is like the, my favorite kind of. I love all different kinds of music yeah. and all different genres, <laughs> modern, pop, you know, and all yeah. whatever, and classical and world. But like, this is like my favorite kind of stuff and bread and butter. So to yeah. someone who is not like in that like sort of universe, whether it be from like a classic rock background yeah. or an Almond Brothers or a Grateful Dead or yeah. or come from that, I could see like you know Pasquan being like very confusing to to the average top 40 listener <laughs> yeah yeah but if i think if you i think once you're hooked you're hooked you, you, you know and it's uh you know i've never seen someone sort of say oh i stopped listening to them five years ago you know what i mean it's like either you're in or you're not you know <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah here tammy says the physical location of pasaquan the sketches the home videos interlaced with music equals perfection and that's also 
certainly well said and i i agree with uh with all that um yeah what a, what a, what an achievement and and they deserve all the success and you know that 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 they've gotten and then and more coming their way and and oh they deserve all the grammys and all and all the <laughs> radio play that they're not getting you know for for their 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 music like shouldn't shouldn't um i am the moon win all the awards am i, I wrong if, about that if, if i were handing them out yes they would they would definitely no i would it, it, it is an, it's it's definitely an achievement um you know the four albums is one piece of music i would i would think is really has to be viewed as, an, as, as a significant achievement and, and, and i mean like if they get if they get industry recognition they it's 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 well deserved um you know they're you know they're part you know they they certainly don't shy away from doing conventional sort of i mean they're on whatever jim kimmel last night so i mean like you know they don't you know they don't shy away from that stuff they don't pretend to be some kind of like you know underground band or anything and um so if if the if the mainstream culture wants to you know you know acknowledge their their good work then it's just going to make it harder for guys like me to get tickets. So, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's, double edged. It's a double edged sword because I want the band to to achieve whatever I, level yeah, of success yeah. that they I wanna, want I, to I wanna achieve. See them, and, I want to see them in small theaters, still. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But I can't. Yeah. I can't be selfish. I, I do. I uh, know. I really. I you. Know, you. You want people to like this band because it's you, you know it's. It, it's great music. It's great art. You 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 feel that it's being done for all the right reasons by the right people, with great motivation, and um, so yeah, it's like how can you not kind of root for it, you know, on that 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 sort of level, you know? But it certainly I don't think is being created with that even sort of in the back of anyone's head. You, you oh, know? of 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 um, course not. But it's but it just it I just find that particularly amazing that you know that they would give out any sort of um, recognition in this music industry and and not um, give I am the moon it's it's due um, creatively you know but that's that's just me but but in terms of the more of what we saw and heard in in the music and you were talking about this earlier just the themes about life being a journey and journeys like we l literally saw it on screen with some of like the driving shots through the winter and it just like kind of maybe like gives you a little bit of that feeling of what it could be like on the on the road really with the with the band and just and again i i'm come back to the the thought that you know i think even you initially brought up earlier is um um uh the uh the idea of farewell not being a farewell like just being something that needs to be like it's part of life but it's not necessarily an ending and it's not necessarily even uh a, a separation because there's still that like spiritual connection between between entities between people and and i'm jumping ahead in my notes here but like at you know we saw those like really connecting images towards the end different different um, artistic creations on screen with like hands and and more like human figures connecting but a lot of symmetry with some of the other like more geometric figures like that was a just a big thing that i saw throughout this was was the the idea of connection you know but also uh, uh, you know acknowledging all these different emotional lows that life yeah. can can bring Throw but your dealing way. with yeah, it's just like a very productive way. It seems like for the band, and certainly us, the listeners and fans, to deal with to deal with um, uh, life. What life that throws at us. The yeah. Well, I mean, I was thinking too. All like, of it. So much, you know, the images of them sort of being in this very you know, these very communal settings, either you know around the campfire or together in the studio, being creative. There was even a shot. Uh, I know in this film of like them cooking together and hanging out and, you know, there was, you know, this was all done at that time during forced separation, you, you know, so here, here was this sort of, you know, you know, this band, this team, this, 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 this group that, you know, they, they all identify with, you know, the same symbol, you know, the feather symbol and they, they, 
there's there's a you know i think that there's like you know there's, there's something very you know you know you're part of the team element to, to to the way that they work not that they talked about this in the way that i would have any insight other than speculation in my head but you know that i i think that that's important to them and to be separated and then reunited just as, as a as that kind of musical family uh, you know i think that you know that 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 shaped a lot of the way that this music kind of came together around you know the again the themes and in, 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 you know adapting those themes in the, in the layla poem to what they were experiencing as, as a lack of a better term family during the pandemic that most everyone else was sort of experiencing that sense of either being alone or that sense of oh i'm, I'm with this person 24 <laughs> 7. yeah <laughs> uh, uh, totally yeah it's funny because i don't even really I, I don't even really think about that specifically all that much i just see these images of the band as a family i do think of that word and the community and and all of that stuff and and and, to, and togetherness but I, I i'm just like thankful to the band that they share like these 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 intimate moments with us yeah. when they're when you know that they're being filmed and just being themselves it's not a concert it's not a stage performance it's not a sit down interview like it's it's just you know we're getting their home movies and it's it's like generous of them to be like that vulnerable with us and give us falcon on the grill as tammy's mentioning in the chat here or the shirtless uh <laughs> earlier by the fire which i forgot to mention like just these and just where they're they where they're vul vulnerable and you see like that they're not yeah. perfect people they're just this family and and to give us this like little snippet of it also yeah. comes with that i think a feeling that we're like you know at least in some small way part of that especially like guys like me and you who've been long time listeners like appreciate that and just makes us feel that much more yeah. connected to, yeah. to the band a little bit more yeah and i think that they did that stuff you know judiciously as well like they didn't it wasn't overkill of like look oh look at us kind of palling around i, was, I think it was kind of it was very <laughs> It's just like how Derek leads the band. It's just like you just get enough of everybody and just leaves you just wanting more. Like whether even in the, the images, whether it was like that, like the like that warm, like light, like uh, how do you describe it? Like the uh, it was a visual effect, like with like it's like a light lasery kind of light, right? Light that streams across the screen. Like that was one of my favorite elements, like visual elements. But it was never like overused and overdone, and, yeah. or like when the band might be like crescendoing or building up to a big moment. There were flashing images and I get a little bit, you know, like, <laughs> uh, like a little woozy during some of the flashing images, but like they were appropriate for those intense moments. And like, you get that like sense of relief when the, you, you kind of like with the peaks and the valleys of the songs, you get peaks and valleys, emotional peaks and valleys with the images and all just like really, really, uh, just worked you know yeah totally. everything is very very seamless you definitely the director alex uh, lambert like um yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. knew, knew and knows the band well enough to uh to to give this project the proper care that it that it deserves and it like it congrats to her it's like a landmark achievement as as well and i want to like someday experience a live screening of all four of the films i decided in two parts We'll do the we'll do part one and two, and then we'll have an intermission, and then we'll do the another uh, another part. I don't know whether it's like I picture like an outdoor thing. I think that would be more fun. It like doesn't drive in. Have, you want to see it at a drive in or something? No, nah, I don't know about a drive in, but like on like a big screen in like like a park or something like where people can like kind of like walk around. It's not this because music will be coming from like hopefully like surround kind of vibe or something like the audio <laughs> is going to be just as Im important for this. But I, I but a, the a theater a theater would work too. But maybe it's something where we could, people could like move around and like. Even maybe dance if they want. Although this is maybe not be all dancey. It's, it always comes down to standing versus sitting. With, with that, with that <laughs> don't go rock. there. Don't go there, man. Don't, don't go there too soon. Um, yeah. What else do I? What else do I got here? I definitely appreciate your time. I know it's getting late on the later. That's okay. I can. I'm you, certainly you know, I, where I you are. I never have a problem chatting TV. So. Uh, yeah, that was such a cool shot. 
Yeah, there was such a cool shot during where where my friend where my friends of like a our cool visual moment with um it was like a kaleidoscope effect kind of thing we saw on screen with the geometric things and just like it seamlessly went to Mike like yeah. uh, Mike on the mic basically and it was just is perfect like just everything is just very very sleekly edited edited yeah. as, as yeah. well but it also uh, had it but it also had that very kind of you know, jittery. Um, you know, it wasn't. It was. It was nicely edited, but it wasn't slick. You, you know, it had a lot of sort of, you know, sort of uh, you know, jarring. Yeah, yeah, like movement in there and stuff. It was. It was. It was, it was cool. You, you know, yeah. No, Very I, purpose I, purposeful kitchen sink. That's kind of what yeah. TTB is when you see you're getting all the the best things. Yeah. Like per, uh, uh, they throw the luxury kitchen sink, the lu- <laughs> in terms of like quality of of music, and and mm. you know, visually with the, with this uh, associated uh, yeah. film, of course. Um, yeah, we did hear a couple of these songs on Fireside, and I had that thought too when we heard "I Can Feel You Smiling." And we did we hear "Where All My Friends" on Fireside as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Heard, we, we heard they did "Hear My Dear." Um, right. They did. Pass um, upon. Castle Klein, where are my friends? La di da. Um, but there was no, they didn't do they didn't do la di da and fireside series. Are you? No, you yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm a yeah. bad fan. I forgot that. If that's and the it case. was, it is funny because I think that was the one too where Susan sort of sort of like, well, like kind of you know kind of trailed off and she said, oh these are these are kind of works in pro you know you know in process and uh, um. You know, hear my dear. They did twice. They did it once with the band and, and once. With that the- I remember that. Lottie, that's coming back. It's 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 yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Ringing a ringing a bell. Lottie, Lottie, that was in the last episode. I I, I, I checked before I talked with you, man. I knew I went, I knew this might come out, so I checked, and it was in episode six. Yeah. Um, and um, but it's you know that song really kind of got it, it. It found its you know it found its way, and. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think you know, as a fan, like we've sort of had some insight, you know, into the develop, you know, these, these songs sort of in the, you know, you know, in in progress version up until, you know, the released versions, and you know, when you you if you paid attention to what they're doing, you know, like if you watched like Eric's uh, Derek's, uh, you know, interview with uh, Rick Beato, mm-hmm. uh, he talks about Gary and the influence of that and. It, you know, so I mean, they definitely gave you some Easter eggs to figure out other elements of how this whole project came together. Um, you know, I mean, even you know, Bobby T was you know, talking, you know, the interview he did with you, and, and uh, you know, so you just learned a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and you know, it helps just you know, they become little puzzle, interesting little puzzle pieces that if you're into this band, you know, it's like stuff that you love to hear about. But again, if you don't know anything other than just what you're listening to, it works too. Yeah, no, it's it's all part of what like, it, like I would be sustained like with just like the music if if they if they didn't have any of this other like context or history or or you know all that stuff. I, just just to hear all the albums and hear them play the songs live, I would just be happy with that. But like learning about the history it makes everything like that much more meaningful and that much more magic magical and and even maybe spiritual in in in, in some regards as well like yeah. with meaning becomes more of a spirit spiritual connection i i think well again i, I for me it, it just comes back down to wow this is really coming from a genuine place like this is this is you know, they're not, you know, they're not looking at an object and trying to figure out what to say about this object. They're actually, you know, opening up and talking about something that has meaning, you know, you know, the, the object, in this case, a poem, you, you know, how that sort of inspired maybe a feeling or connected a feeling that they could turn into a, like another tent, you know, another piece of art, you know, and, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a, an interesting creative it's interesting, I guess, for me at least, to think about the the, the creative process that they that they engage in, and that it's you know, um, it's you know, like no knock against someone like you know, you know Beyonce, but like you know, when you think about like someone who works with like you know, 
15 producers and you know like we, you know, we, like when a team sort of comes together to sort of you know construct a song yeah you know, that's one way i think of having a piece of music versus you know maybe a, a creative process like you know like this right we are, it's you know, you're you you you're inspired by something to then you take your own inspiration and your own emotional attachment and you create something else right but it's all kind of almost part of an artistic continuum that um you know gives i think the music a certain energy and a certain you know certain feel yeah i think i think hierarchies in terms of the creation of music can be more true to the artistic process or less true to you know the artistic process at least that's how that's how i feel like 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 you're saying it's just more what ttv does we feel is more organic and authentic you know because of the the way that the band you know all supports each other and builds the music together mm -hmm. and 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 leans on each other versus you know um you know mad scientists or whatever <laughs> like trying to come up with like the next big <laughs> whatever it may be. And those people have, are certainly skilled and, and get compensated well for, for their work too. Hey, I'm not, I'm not knocking it. Is there anything else we need to cover? Another day was a good, great song. The last one. And uh, yeah, no, I, and again, I, I you know, like I, I, as I stated in, in the review, I, you know, I think that they, you know, they really just stayed true to the vision of the whole project and they didn't take the opportunity to do something over the top. I mean, here they are. It's like the last song and this really ambitious project that they spent all this time on and had a very That's the over the top music. element to it. Huh? The fact that they the, the fact that they achieved this, that's the over the topness. <laughs> yeah, of it. like I just think that they just stayed very very true to the vision of the whole project like to the very end, you, you know. And and again, like the story the, the story of Layla does not end well, right? But there there there, there is sort of a you, you know you know there's a, there is a sort of a spiritual finality to the story with you know she, you know, she dies and he lays down until he dies and all the animals kind of hang around so there's you know there's you know everyone everyone kind of stays true to their own mad visions and and, and so did they and um you know and, and there's beauty in that and there's struggle in that and and they captured all that stuff, you know, and if today sucks, tomorrow's another day, right? So it's, uh, I, I just love that they just didn't, you know, they, they, they didn't break character throughout the whole thing, which I think is just, just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a farewell. Fa a farewell is not a farewell. It's just like part of the journey that needs to be dealt with and processed emotionally and that's kind of like what i got maybe out of at least this part this final part of the yeah the, the album yeah yeah no so it's again it's, it's, it's you know it's you know it's just incredible just an incredible project with uh, you know this part all the parts really have their own it's you know i'm not going to complain that they released them in, in like you know these little you know digestible chunks because no, it's they keep doing it. do it every month they should do it they should have one uh next month too. and a, every a every subscription month. they should set a subscription series there yeah. <laughs> about quarterly that's four a year but gives you enough time to maybe <laughs> they tour also yeah they work hard i i mean i admire like you know just the sheer work ethic and and you know ability that they have to deal with the grind and just been able to do it for decades straight other than you know when they were writing this and you know, that's them still working yeah yeah so they never stopped their journey the road goes on forever as they that's say what the, as, what the as band one said. person said yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well this it's always a pleasure talking with you about this stuff and listening to what you, you know what you bring to the conversation so Thank you for having me on again. Oh, I thank you. It. I think more vice versa is the case. You're, you're mm -hmm. very articulate with your writing when it comes to talking about music and TTBN, speaking it. Like, that's that's music to me in a lot of ways. It's like hearing somebody in their element. Like, like will you're I, not thinking. Will, will, think, you, will I see you in New York in October? Oh, yeah. I'm going to the final five. What All a right. nut. What I'll a see, nut. I'll see you there.
So, very cool. Anything else you wanted to plug or promote? Artsfuse. Art, was it artsfuse.org? .org, yeah. Yep. Yeah, is the interview you can search for it there? I think the other next. So I, you know, I, I, I do a lot of TTB, but I've done, I do some other stuff. I'm working on a review of the new, the new Marcus King record that's coming out on Friday and get some other stuff going on. So yeah, if you want to check out some of the other writing, I, I chip in when I can. So, all right. Cool. Well, thanks again. And I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. I'm Thank sure. Thank you, Adam. All that right. Good. Take it easy. Be thanks well. again. Later. Bye-bye. So there you go. Episode 89 with Scott. McLennan recapping farewell uh, with me. I definitely appreciate his time. I love that guy. What a great articulate speaker that man is when it comes to to talking uh, music. Um, I love. Uh, I mean, what else is there to say? Just just a, an achievement, a landmark achievement. Is um, is I am the moon. All four, all four uh, records. Um, to follow this show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. Um, just search Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on YouTube to follow and subscribe the video portion. If you're watching this right now, you're there already. I will be releasing audio versions of this uh, as well. Uh, I'm at Adam Choid on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow me. The band, uh, their official website is TedeschiTrucksBand.com. Definitely go there. Buy all the, the merch, uh, the albums the tickets for shows join the swamp family fan club which has lots of good stuff in it like getting all this discounts and access to shows uh, via nugs and 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 all kinds of good stuff in there and message boards and connecting to just another outlet for connecting to fan and also if you go to pins by julianne uh julie Yule, she was just on this uh, podcast recently talking about all the amazing pins that she creates uh, for the you know for the band about you know related to all things ttb and a little almond brother stuff as well 25 percent discount if you use podcast i think that's good to the end of the month uh, that's pins by julianne julie is j-u-l-i-e and with two n's a double n e pins by julianne that's etsy.com uh just go to etsy i'm sure you can find that um yeah these pins are amazing more are coming uh with her but I think that's about all I got for tonight, for today. I appreciate uh, you guys listening and watching and, and the lurkers and, and the listeners and, and everything the band has been sharing with us. I can't even keep up with um, today's Drugs band because like, they're doing shows. They're putting out music. I'm going to multiple shows. Uh, you know, San Diego and L.A. were both amazing. But I, again, thank you, everyone, for listening and for all your support. More coming soon um this band is just on fire right now uh but let's talk soon peace